G'day guys, Tos20 here and welcome back to Marble Mountain. This episode's been a long time coming. This has been an area that I've been wanting to work on for a really long time. The opposite side of Montana has looked very unfinished for such a long time. In fact, I do remember the moment when we flattened the mountain that used to sit over here, thinking that we're going to do some work probably over the next couple of weeks, but I'm pretty sure that was something like two or maybe like five months ago. <laughs> it was a really long time and it's been ages since we um, made those changes and have just been looking at this flat, unterraformed area um, opposite our beautiful big city, which has just been destroying the views so for so long. And now we are finally working over here. Um, although we are not going to be making any big changes overnight. In fact, we do a lot of changes in this episode, but we probably make things look much worse. So don't get your hopes up. We've got a while to work over here. And I mean, that's pretty exciting if you ask me, because there's a lot that I want to do over this side. Um, a lot of places where I'm taking inspiration from, and I would really love your suggestions. So please, in the comment section, hit me up. I don't have any experience with San Francisco. My only experience with California is the two times that I've been to Los Angeles and I would really love some ideas for some um, places that I can get inspiration for. We are of course taking the most inspiration from San Francisco but I am not limited to that place because I would really love to get as much of California within this location within the map of Marble Mountain as possible so please hit me up. And of course, we're not exclusively going for cities and towns. I would love to get as much of the natural environment of California within Marble Mountain. And if there's like any really cool, intricate areas that only locals know about, then I would love to get those bits in as well. Um, but basically trying to get as many of those features within this area as possible. Saying that, we end up changing the map theme and I don't just download a straight map theme from the workshop. I end up downloading the uh, theme mixer mod, which is just so powerful these days. I remember when it was, I used it many years ago and it was pretty good, um, a bit clunky, but it was good. Uh, now that I'm using it in Marble Mountain, it is just so powerful and it allows me to change up the map theme, just like tweak those little bits that I have really wanted to tweak for a long time and it means that now I can change a lot of the ground textures where I have been really wanting to change them for a while. If you guys have been following the channel for a while, there's areas of Marble Mountain that I've just been like, oh, I wish this was a different color. And now we are finally doing that. And probably the biggest change is that I've changed the oil texture. I think maybe the oil, maybe the oil, I can't remember which one of them, but one of them I've changed them to a different color, more of a muddy color, because we actually had a very, like the oil and the ore were very, very similar. And in a map where we are doing so much stuff based around nature and the natural environment, it didn't make sense to have something that was so similar in color. So now we have two different types. Um, but look, I'm getting ahead of myself. That is much further on down the track of this episode. Uh, we will do a live play where I do explain a bit more about that. But for the time being, uh, we are working on the opposite side of Montana. And this is where, this is like the part of the time lapse where I think I'm going to build like a lot of the road layout for this side of the, of, um, of the episode. But I end up abandoning that idea because I realized that I really needed to plan out this area well and truly in advance so that we can get the natural environment looking authentic and making it look like it's been really created by mother nature rather than some guy trying to create mountains in an area to best suit himself so that the city can be around it. And you know, that's really important to like think about where mountains are going to sit within a natural setting and how uh, that interacts with the water and the Bay Area and the city. So I wanted to uh, basically redevelop this whole area up and do a lot of terraforming. And yeah, what you'd see me do right now is starting to plan out where I want the city to sit basically. Um, just working on this little headland that um, sits in this bay. And this is where the bridge also connects up to the other side. You saw that I placed our toll booth, which I think is very much needed around here. 
And um, this is going to be very much the outskirts of the city. Um, there's not going to be a huge amount of stuff going on around here. And this is an area that I'm taking inspiration from. Um, this little spot over here in San Francisco, or at least San Francisco Bay, or you know, whatever it's called. But I thought that this was pretty similar to what I was going for. It was. It took me a while to find exactly the type of inspiration to take for this build because I didn't really know exactly how to build over here or how the bridge was going to interact with the landscape. But I think that this probably works the best. Um, and as you can already tell that we're not going to go for a big city over this side. We're going to go for something a little bit smaller and we've got a whole bunch of areas that we could be taking inspiration from but you guys please hit me up i would um, really love your suggestions for city inspiration we don't just have to stick to san francisco we can go to um, pretty much anything on the on the west coast of um yeah basically anything anything in california i would be taking inspiration from um, and obviously nothing bigger than what montana looks like because this is obviously going to be something that's going to be a bit smaller but definitely the second largest city um, in Marble Mountain and um, name suggestions any sort of suggestions please hit me up because uh, yeah it'd be really cool to get some ideas from you guys um, but you can sort of see now where I you know I was working on such a tiny little spot and then it just grew a little bit bigger and then it grew bigger and then all of a sudden we've totally demolished that mountain so yeah we are demolishing a lot in this episode um, but it is so worthwhile because it means then we can plan all this area out at the same time and we don't have to worry about how, you know, the, the sort of changes that we always have to make when we end up expanding things out later on down the track. Um, it should always be natural environment, then figuring out where your roads go and then figuring out where your rail goes and then we can start planning the city from there. And that's what I'm hoping to do over this side and... Um, I'm pretty sure next episode we'll have to work on some of the highways to figure out where they're going to go because they're going to be sort of tricky to navigate around some of the mountains that I plan to place around here. Um, and there's also going to be a bunch of waterways and rivers and stuff like that that we're also going to see around here too. Speaking of rivers, you might have also noticed that the main waterway uh, that Montana sits on has now been expanded out. And that's something that I've been wanting to do for ages. I have never wanted this main river to look like a river. I wanted it to feel more of a big bay area where lots of um, lots of areas sits on it rather than just having like a river that snakes through the city and goes down into the uh, into Marble Lake. Instead, I wanted it to feel like it had like a big body of water and then there was multiple rivers that stretched from it. So you can see that I'm changing the shape of it and trying to give the illusion that it's much bigger than it really is. Um, and it's kind of funny because I feel like this has just grown over time. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's started off so small and then it got a little bit wider and then a little bit wider. And as we continue with these projects, they seem to make the river a little bit wider. But hopefully this is the last time we end up changing it the way that we are. Actually, this has got to be the last time, right? I mean, we can't do any more than we are possibly doing right now. This has got to be the absolute last time we work on this river um, but I do like the end product of it I think it gives the illusion of a big landscape rather than um, something that's so small um, because I think the the river when it was just a small little stretch of lake it uh, felt much smaller than I was really trying to go for and we're going for a lot of false perspective um, if some of you guys will probably remember me talking about this but Marble Mountain definitely meant to represent a whole state and that's a pretty big thing. So we need to make this map that is kind of small. I mean, the maps in, I mean, the maps in City Skylands are pretty big, but you know, to fit an entire state into it or, you know, a whole province into what is the size of the map, it's pretty tricky. So we're trying to give the illusion that it is a large stretch of area that has deserts and rivers and oceans and mountains and that's pretty tricky so that's what we're trying to do and speaking of that here we are working with the theme mixer mod where I am changing up a bunch of my colors um, with my resources and my ground textures and um, even to even like there's the color of the water so that we can make the natural environments look a little bit more diverse whereas before I didn't and as part of that I um, decided to change the 
or texture, um, like I said before, to um, a much different type of color. And I ended up changing it to like a muddy sort of texture, which I think is going to fit much better around the swamp and around the rivers and the waters because we do have a lot of them around Marble Mountain. So I think we definitely needed something like that. And because I ended up changing that, all of my desert ended up turning into mud. <laughs> so I had to go through and recolor it and this took forever. So this is why it feels like I'm not doing much in this episode because I'm sort of backtracking, but I had to change a lot and that was pretty painful, but I think the end result is much, much, much better. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to just bring back that that uh, those other colors coming through the mountainside and also trying not to make it too green because I really wanted this area to be a lot drier and I think with the new map texture um, the map theme sorry that uh, that works a lot nicer um, and something else that I wanted to do a, a while ago but the Springwood map theme didn't really allow me to do that but I wanted to make the ground, so the watercolor a little bit different, um, particularly in some areas like the swamp. And the way that I did that was I used the polluted water and just changed the color of it to like a darker green color. And then putting a sewage treatment facility up on the, um, up, up the top of the stream, coming through the swamp land, it just looks so much more realistic. I really love it and it just creates that different type of effect. I know a lot of you guys are probably going to be a bit triggered that the fact that it is actually polluted water, but I think that the overall result is a much better look. Um, and then another mod that I ended up grabbing, and I know I've grabbed a couple of extra mods, but I think they're well worth it. Um, I ended up grabbing this other mod. I can't even remember the name of it now, to be honest. <laughs> it's escaped my brain, but um, this, uh, this mod basically allows me to use the fertile resources tool to basically paint down the ground um, anywhere I like without it being affected by the forest. Because basically when you use the, the fertile resources paintbrush, you can only do it in areas that don't have any foliage, which is pretty much no area. <laughs> Everywhere on the map has foliage. So um, this allows me to paint it down in different locations. So I was just using that tool and um, basically just following the description and ended up being pretty pretty cool. It's, it just gives me another uh, another way of creating different colors on the map. And that, that was, that's kind of what happened to this episode. It sort of turned into a me making big changes for the natural environment and I think that they're very much well worth it because that was something that I was definitely struggling with for a while and now we have a couple of different colors that we can play with and I think you'll see them really come to effect in this particular location where I wanted to create a bit more of a marshy uh, landscape in this area and for this particular area I wanted to take inspiration from this spot here in San Francisco Bay and this is like a little town that is situated um, in this little inlet area. Um, there's a bit of a swampy landscape too that I wanted to create and I thought that this would be a good transition to this area. Um, kind of coming out of the city a little bit more and be a bit more of an outskirt of a town so I thought that this would be pretty good here and now that I've got a bit more of a muddy ground texture that I can play with then I can create um, a lot more of a realistic look around here. So I decided to play with it and try and see what I can do. And honestly, I don't get very far. I just wanted to put down the groundwork, figure out where I wanted wanted this area to sit, and then we'll work on this at another stage. And um, basically, I'm just putting in the groundwork, figuring out where I want particular features to sit, and we'll put down the detail work um, in the episodes to come. So next episode, I'm probably going to be doing more terraforming and figuring out where mountains are going to go. I'm hoping to get a bit of the highways too. I, I can sort of see myself doing that or it might be too much uh, to do in that episode, so I'll have to wait and see. But I sort of feel like they'll go hand in hand with creating those mountains. And then, yeah, hopefully we can start working on the town, or sorry, the city on the other side of Montana. And we'll just have to wait and see how much how far we get. Uh, but it would be really good to get a lot of the ideas down for the terraforming work in the next episode, at least. So we're not looking at this blank, very plain looking landscape. We could at least have some mountains and some bushland around here too, and a bit of a cool transition into that desert. But that is it for the time lapse. Let's get into the live play. 
So this has turned into one of those episodes where I destroy more than I build, but I can justify all those changes, I promise. Uh, we really needed to make some big changes over here, and I know at the very beginning of the episode I probably ramble about how I really want to make this more terraformed and more realistic, and in fact, all I've really done is just totally destroyed all the mountains over this side. But, my god, we are going to be making some big progress in the next episode. Um, but I sort of had to cut the time lapse short right where I did because I feel like I needed to explain some of my next moves. And then um, next episode I'm hoping to get all the terraforming done. So, as you can see, the bay has changed a lot. And the reason being is I really wanted this to look more like a bay rather than a river. That's something that I've been pushing for for a long time. Whereas when I first started this series, this was like a little snaky river that, you know, was right next to the city. And I just didn't like that look. That was definitely not what I was going for. Whereas this, I think, makes more sense. And I think what really sets it apart from being um, more of a bay or more of like a big body of water is just the shape of the... Uh, the land around it. So rather than just having like one snaky path, for instance, like this, instead we've got these little inlets where you can imagine a lot of um, streams would be coming down. And I tried to make that true for a lot of different areas. So, you know, where we've got a little um, inlet over here, I'm going to have a bit of a valley. So it looks like all the water has been trickling off into that um, and it's been created naturally. Uh, and then for something like this as well, we've got a bit more of a flat marshy land. I'm going to have mountains coming around these sides so that it does look like these rivers have been created more naturally. Um, and that's something that just wasn't there before. And I'm actually going to have to explain a little bit around here as well because we're going to be making some changes. Not for a while, but, you know, in the back of my mind, I, I want you guys to know exactly what I'm thinking. So we will get some mountains around here in the next episode, but these rivers are really important so I can know exactly whereabouts I'm going to place these mountains rather than just placing them randomly. I really want this side to look more natural. Uh, and, you know, let's just go to Google Earth because I think we need to be talking about some of the references that I am um, getting those ideas from. So, for instance, uh, you know, we've created something like this. I'll jump back in game in a second. But you can see where it sits amongst these mountains. In fact, you can see where all these little rivers sit amongst these mountains. And that's what I'm going to be going for. So then when I end up doing more of the terraforming in the next episode and we put down the big mountains, I'm going to be putting them in a way so that it looks like they have been created naturally. Whereas otherwise, I don't think that's going to happen if I just place them as I you know, build the city out. So that's something that I need to consider. Uh, and then um, the city. So uh, a couple of episodes ago, I asked you guys, you know, what, what are we going to put over here? Because originally I was like, okay, the rest of Montana is going to sit over here. But in reality, this is going to be something completely different. So I wonder what we're going to call this I've had a couple of suggestions from you guys, but please keep them coming. We will probably build this in the next couple of episodes. Um, something that I need to do is I need to move this bridge more in the center because now that we've moved this over, we need to we need to push it over a little bit more. Um, but then you can sort of see where I want the city to sit. Um, I'm going to probably put it around something like this. This being the outskirts, this being the outskirts. Uh, I would like to have a bit more of a focus on how the outskirts of a city look on this side of the city rather than over here. I felt like I lost a lot of that over here. This doesn't feel like the outskirts of a city. Neither does this so much. Uh, whereas when I build over here, I'm going to make sure that we get that vibe. Um, and over here, I want to have some more big box factories and warehouses and stuff like that. Uh, you know the types of ones you get around the outskirts. Uh, I just think they make for a bit more interesting types of uh, areas of the city and I want to do that over here. So this city is going to be definitely much smaller than Montana but you know we'll have a little bit of a skyline for sure. You know we'll probably download a couple of extra buildings so that it's got a bit more of a character um, but I don't really know what I'm going to vibe over here. I mean we've got a couple of options. You know, if I was to go back to San Fran and, you know, over here, we've got a couple of different cities that, um, 
the names ex escape my brain right now, but you guys probably know where they are. Um, but you know, we got something like this, we could take inspiration from, or we could be going for something more like this, you know, something that's a little bit of a smaller skyline, but then we've also got, you know, little places like, where is he? There he is. You know, we could go in for something like this. Or we could do something totally different and go for something more on this scale. But I don't know, I mean, we've got a couple of options and it doesn't have to be based around San Francisco. It can be pretty much anywhere on the East Coast as long as it makes sense. Um, but it would be cool to put something, you know, so that it feels as if it does belong on, an, um, on a West Coast city. I don't know if I said that before. I probably said East Coast, which I always seem to say. Uh, but you can also see how I've dragged out the the bridges too. I wanted them to look as if they have been um, built on the areas of land that already extend out the closest to um, you know each part. Whereas they're not going to build a bridge from here to here because that's the furthest possible spot. So I tried to make sure that they did that, um, and we'll do a bit of stuff over here. Um, I do need to fix this because it's a bit it's a little weird. But I do think that makes a little bit more sense with this over here. But this is going to be quite fun. I'm looking forward to working over here. Uh, we're probably going to build some, I don't know, it's going to be like a little, little bit of a town, a bit of industry, but um, also a little bit of a, um, like more like suburban sort of stuff. Uh, going to be going for something like this, but definitely not as dense. It's going to be much, much, much smaller. But I do like this, you know, little bits of industry that we have around here. And it would be cool to do something similar. Well, that's pretty cool. Love these planned developments. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. All right, we might do something like that as well. I know we've already got something like that in, uh, in Copper Falls. But, you know, we could do another one. So that is the idea on this area over here. Man, this is going to be a challenge. I don't know what I'm going to do over here. I mean, how the hell are we going to make this transition, guys? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but we'll give it a go. Uh, and something over here, too. I mean, we... I would really like to make a better transition from, like, a temperate environment to this desert over here than what I attempted over this area. Because this... As much as I do love these mangroves um, and this swamp land, it's just... It doesn't make a huge amount of sense being so close to the desert. But, you know... It is a bit of a fantasy type of region that we are sort of going for. I know not, nothing's, not everything's going to make complete sense, but I do want to make a better attempt at making a smoother transition from this to this, whereas that is not going to work. And over here is like a good example of me working with the new map theme that I've just been playing with. So these mountains just look a, a lot better. And there's still a bit of a work in progress. We are still working on them to try and make them just a little bit drier. I might pop down a couple more trees just to blend it in a little bit more, but I think they're looking pretty good. And that's all thanks to the new map theme. Um, and then areas like this where we're actually able to achieve a bit more of a muddy type of effect, which I think looks much nicer. And then we've got this like area over here where it looks a bit wetter. You know, where the water's obviously been creeping up and that's just been used. Uh, that's been created by using the surface painter, which I think works really well. Hello. And then the swamp land, guys. I mean, the swamp, the color is looking like a swamp. I mean, I love that this has a different color than over here. I mean, the transition's a bit weird, but you get this, you know, like you do get that sort of effect. Um, it needs a little bit of work. Um, I've turned down all my graphics, by the way, so that's why we're rendering at a pretty bad distance. But, I mean, the colors just look so much better. And I've played around with a couple of the color settings. Yeah. Uh, so that we do have this really dark tone that's right underneath, uh, you know, directly under the water. You get this really cool color tone. But I just think that this looks so much better. But we do need to fix a couple things, like this really bright grass over here. We definitely need to fix that up. Uh, but it's a bit of a work in progress. Like I said, we've probably ruined more stuff than we've actually able, we were, we were actually able to build in this episode, but very, very much necessary and big progress in terms of the things that I've done in my mind and, um, you know, figuring out what I want to do next. 
And in terms of things that I want to do next, so we are going to be working on a lot of the terraforming. We're going to try and get some mountain ranges coming through here, through here, and then probably around here. And then that's going to make a good barrier between this and this type of environment that I think is going to be a much better look. Whereas before we had this mountain range that just snaked across here and that just blocked us off completely. And then I think over this side, I'm a bit stumped. I don't really know exactly. I mean, we could justify a town over here. I remember I did a live stream last week and you guys said that'd be cool to do a town around here. Um, we have a city over here and another little village over this way and potentially something over here. We could justify having another town over this area, but you know, we don't want to do too many. We want there to be more natural environment than we want a bustling, bustling city. So we'll have to just be a bit careful with how we build things. So look, now that I look at it, it's probably going to be two episodes. <laughs> uh, don't you guys agree? I mean, it's going to be big. Uh, something else that I want to do when we do start building the city is, um, well, at least building this area, is getting more farmland, a bit like this, getting it a little bit more um, spread out around these areas too. And then um, some of you guys might have remembered me talking about this in the live stream, but I do want to do some big changes around here at some stage. Not for a while, but there's definitely some big changes to come. Um, and mainly because I just think that this doesn't make any sense to have water. I mean, it comes from up here, but it just doesn't really flow naturally, um, which has bothered me for a really long time. And... I think if we're going to change that, then this river needs to probably come up to about here. But all, all, away, all the way around these areas, I mean, this mountainside, I can't do anything with. Because the elevation is actually quite high. And this just feels like one giant hillside, whereas it doesn't feel like a mountain. Uh, and it makes, the, makes Marble Mountain a bit dwarfed as well. And I think it would be really cool location for a dam too. So I'm thinking we might put the dam up here and we're going to turn this one mountain into probably like many different mountain ranges and they're going to be more on this size rather than this. Um, but that's like much later on down the track. But just to give you a bit of an idea of how much everything's going to change and then plus once we get an idea of how these mountains are going to look then we can start terraforming this and figuring out how that's all going to start to take shape. Changes guys. Big, 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 big changes. <laughs> I feel like we're doing another big episode. And this is why it's been taking me so long to get them out. Because a lot of these things take a long time in my head to plan and to figure out. But, um, you know, look, I do like these ones. And I hope you guys do as well. Please let me know in the comments section what you guys are thinking. And if you have any ideas of things to place down and to build and inspiration, then please hit me up in the comments. Because, um, yeah, it's definitely a collaborative process. And I need your help. But that is it for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching and all your support. It's very much appreciated. I want to give a special shout out to some of my beloved patrons like Ben Redfern, Xavier Chung and Phil Garrett. Guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.